cannot know what madness lies in a man's mind or in his heart. You have no doubt all heard stories of Count Dracula. He was a soldier and he was a king and he was the very first of his kind, the very first vampire. His real name was Vlad Tepes III or Vlad the Impaler and Oh, forgive me, I did not introduce myself. My name is Dr. Jonathan Seward, proprietor of the Children's St. Vincent Asylum, just off the French Quarter here in New Orleans. In our modern world of 1897, I am quite familiar with the stories that are told of bayou witches and monsters that lurk in the darkness, of mystical fiends that haunt our dreams and drive us past our wits. But, until I met this man, I thought, no. I believed these fantasies to be simply the malfunction of the mind. I shall begin to recount the most horrifying case of my career. Case number 666. It began in Romania in 1469, when Vlad was fighting the Turks to regain his throne. He was in love with the daughter of King Matthias, Princess Alona, and so our story unfolds. You will be mine forever. Vlad, you are perverse. We are not yet married. You are far too familiar. Ilona, my love, we will be together forever. And when our two kingdoms have finally joined hands, so shall we. You are too serious, my love. Ilona, please. I must leave tomorrow. Do you understand that? Do not speak of your duty. When I am King Alona, it will be my sacred mission to bring order to Romania. If anyone lies or commits any injustice, he is not likely to stay alive, whether nobleman, priest, or common man. For there must be security for all in my lands. And if they say I'm a vindictive man, and they fear me, then that is well. For when a prince is powerful at home, he is able to do as he wills. If I am feared by the right people, Romania will be strong. You will be a great king. Feel my heart, Ilona. It beats so fast. It beats for you. When we are married, my love, our hearts will be bound together forever. But Ilona, you must know that my soul is already yours. And mine is yours, my love. Then you must know that when I engage in glorious combat tomorrow... Please don't say that. Please do not glorify death. If it is anything nobler than a senseless act of vicious barbarism. Please, Ilona, know that when I fight, it is for you. When I do anything, it is for you. I am so scared, Vlad. I do not know what I would do if you did not come back. I shall be lost. Shh. I will always be with you. If you are lost, I will find you. We will be together forever. <laughs> they were indeed married, and Vlad joined the Order of the Dragon like his father. The men called him Dracula, the son of the dragon. Now, the dragon was a fearful ruler. And he was cruel, yet he was a just and fair man to his people. He said to me once that all men, like galaxies, must come to dust. And so would he. So, how did he become this creature we have grown to fear come sundown? Well, it's said that while out to war, a letter was sent to his love telling of his death. So distraught, she committed suicide. My love, please! No! No! Oh, my love! My love, please! Don't leave me! Flat. No. Don't speak. Save your strength. I will always be with you. If you are lost, I will find you. We shall be together forever. They say that the moment that Vlad Dracula lost the soul of his love, he renounced God and all of his works. You have taken from me all of it had meaning. 
all that is love. And so from this moment, you are my enemy. And so began the curse of the vampire. It's said that vampires have two hearts, or two souls. Since one heart, or one soul, never dies, the vampire remains undead. The curse of Dracula, to have no home in heaven or in hell, constantly searching for the soul of his love. But that is simply superstition, and one should not believe in such foolishness. The thought that a man walks the earth slaked with a thirst for blood, that he could be warded off by garlic or killed by a stake through the heart, or my personal favorite, that a man of faith can keep the beast at bay simply by raising a crucifix in front of him. Superstition is religion pushed to excess, and it is born out of fear. I am a man of reason. I do not scare so easily. I now turn your attention to the case at hand, the story of Jonathan Harker, a solicitor who is currently traveling in the Carpathians in search of destiny, and Mina Murray, his beautiful fiancée. It is but two weeks for Mardi Gras, that celebration of excess before religious fasting, and like most girls her age, Mina is quite busy discussing other matters with her childhood friend, Miss Lucia Westenra a creature of unparalleled beauty and grace. And so, it begins. Oh, Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan. Mina, really? You speak as though you were a lovesick child. Lucy, don't be so mean. Mm -hmm. You simply do not understand true love. Uh-huh. You see, right now, Jonathan and I are just engaged. But when he has returned, we have to be married, then... Uh-huh. Then I am to become a stenographer. And? And I may travel with him and help him with his work as a solicitor. He is securing an estate here in New Orleans for a count in Transylvania. And that is it. What? Mina, darling, sister, do not speak of his work. It bores me. <laughs> Oh, Lucy, you are a fool. When he returns Miss Tripp to Castle Dracula, I shall put to work all that I've studied. You see, he's been keeping his thoughts down in shorthand in a journal and has been writing a letter to me in that same shorthand every day. I know because I've transcribed them all. I shall then transcribe these journals upon his return. Oh, Lucy, the advantages he's having be mine. Forever! Lucy, you are truly too much. Will you desist, please, with these cold and truly unflattering words of business? I thought you'd be happy for me. And I am, dearest. But I grow weary of this talk of shorthand. Tell me of his hand, of his strong, powerful hand of his body, of how he makes you quake with- Lucy! Do not Lucy me! I have not seen you, my heart, my dearest and oldest friend, in over a month. Where is the girl who used to run through the gardens of wildflowers? The child who told me secrets underneath the willow tree, right outside my bedroom. Oh, I find myself here with a nun whose fiancé has left her cold. Not cold? Well, not exactly. Oh, Lucy, may I tell you something? As long as it's filled with lusty and delicious details. <laughs> Sometimes, when I think of him, my hands begin to tremble, and my heart begins to race. Oh, my. He's been gone nearly a week, and my blood aches for him. I find myself unable to think of anything else. I've come to devote myself to his letters. I like the sound of this. Here, I'll read you one. My dearest Mina, I'm just now... Settling in at the Golden Crone Hotel. A suggestion of the Count. Now, I was to arrive at 646, but it seems the further east we go, the less punctual the trains become. I wonder what it would be like in China. All day long, we seem to dawdle through a country full of indescribable beauty. 
Oh, last night, I had such a meal. It was eggplant stuffed with force meat, a very excellent dish which they called impletata. And yes, before you ask, I did get you the recipe. Now, after serving me, this plump man spoke a couple of words I did not understand and crossed himself. An odd behavior I've seen in a number of these simple people. Mina, I've read that every known superstition in the world is gathered into this horseshoe of the Carpathians as though it was the center of some sort of imaginative whirlpool. If so, my stay may be very interesting. And I must remember to ask the Count all about them. As I passed to my carriage, this round old woman stopped me. She was so charmingly befuddled that she had all but forgotten German and was speaking parts in some other language. She asked me if I knew what day it was tomorrow. And when I said that I did not understand, she stated that it was the eve of St. George's Day. And then even stranger, Mina, she asked me, Do you know where you're going? And to whom you will meet? Istinshek, which means God's seat. And then she pressed a rosary in my hand with a tear in her eye, and she said, For your mother's sake. And it was then that she crossed herself. It's all quite ridiculous, my dear, but soon I will be with the Count, and my real work will begin. This? This is what sends your heart racing? <laughs> Some European nonsense about force meat and rosaries? Oh, Lucy, he's a remarkable writer. It is though we are truly there with him. Well, he is beautiful. I certainly wish I was there with him. Lucy, you are too much. Lucy, you are too much. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Miss Lucy, what on earth is going on in here? Uh, Evangeline, please, help. Miss Lucy, this foul beast has attacked me. He a beast, take this one as sacrifice. <laughs> Why, Miss Lucy, I never. I'm sorry, Evangeline. Miss, the doctor, he has returned. Ugh, tell him I've died. Lucy! Send him away, Evangeline. Of course, Miss. A doctor? Lucy, are you sick? Sick of all these suitors. <sighs> Mother says that I'm ready to be married off to a wealthy man. She speaks of it day and night. Lucia Westernra, a girl of your station ought to marry a respectable gentleman. If I had to marry a respectable gentleman, Mina, I would lose all respect for myself. <sighs> I mean, really, it is the true tragedy of our modern times. Lucy, you speak as though it be the death of you to be married. And what do you mean by suitors? Three proposals, my dear Mina. Three proposals in one day. Oh, my. Can you believe that? And I do not wish to sound conceited, but you know it is true what they say. When it rains, it pours. <laughs> oh, I shall tell you something about each of them, but you must promise not to tell any of the other girls. Some girls are so vain. From my heart to yours, I swear my secrecy to you, my sister. Well, the first is Honorable Arthur Holmwood, Lord of Goldman, a gentleman, and an absolute bull who gets along entirely too well with Mama. Oh, but Mina, he is handsome. I found myself entranced by simply looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Lord Goldman, I do go on. You still have to tell me to hush, or we'll be here all day. Oh no, madam, you are a delight. I could listen to your stories forever. And you shall be even more delighted by my Lucy, wherever she is. <coughs> her stories are endless, truly. I have to hush her up sometimes. She is so loquacious. But prompt, she is not. I simply do not know what she has gotten off to. Well, if she is half as beautiful as you, then we will get along marvelously. Oh, my Lucy will simply adore you. It was as though I wasn't even in the room, Mina. Lucy! And I was right there, Mina. Lucy! It's as though she looks right through me sometimes. That girl, I swear. We should go and find her Lord Godalming. Please, Arthur. Of course, Arthur. We can have another cup of tea as well. That sounds like a slice of heaven. 
Arthur. I'm positively jealous of my Lucy, wherever she is. That blessed girl, where has she run off to? I swear, we need to put a bell around her neck or tie her to the bed. <laughs> Lucille! She does not respect my wishes. It's not Arthur's fault, but I don't think I'll see him again. I'm so sorry. Oh, but then there's Mr. Quincy Morris, the son of that kind old widower plantation owner. Oh, Mina, he's so young, so fresh. He's the feel of someone who's had so much adventure in his life. And Mina, his embrace is intoxicating. He's a physical creature, and he raises horses. <gasps> oh, wait! oh, Miss Luce, <laughs> I thought about you all morning. Oh, you are too forward, Mr. Morris. My mother is in the other room. Well, then I guess I'll have to keep you quiet then, won't I? <sighs> you are an animal, Mr. Morris. Perhaps you're the one to tame me, Miss Lucy. I just may be, Mr. Morris. I just may be. Oh, Miss Lucy! Well, I know I'm not good enough to shine your shoes, but... I guess if we wait to find a man that is, you'll grow old and gray before you quit. Won't you just hitch up alongside me and let's take the long road together? I am not one of your horses, Mr. Morris. Oh, I apologize for my candor, Miss Lucy. I hope that if I've made the mistake in being so familiar, I'm so grave. So momentous an occasion. You would forgive me. Mr. Morris, Quincy, I, I don't know what to say. Oh, Mina, I was so entranced by his eyes. Dear Quincy, there is someone else. He's nowhere near as forward as you. He's yet to even tell me that he loves me. He's a doctor. I was right to speak to him so frankly. Quite a light came onto his face. He put his hands out and took mine. I think I put them into his. And in a haughty way, he said, That's my brave girl. It's better worth being late for a chance of winning you than being in time for any other girl in the world. Oh, Mina. I cared for him so deeply in that moment. Don't cry now, my dear. If it's for me, well, I'm a hard nut to crack. And I take it standing up. If that other fellow doesn't know his happiness, well... He better find it soon. Or he'll have to deal with me. I didn't want to let him go, Mina. I felt cared for in his arms. But I had to tell him that I simply knew nothing of harnesses and hitching. Lucy, you are too droll. But what of this man you love? Who is the third suitor? Dr. Seward. He's only 29, but he already controls an immense lunatic asylum. He's evidently been schooling himself in all aspects of the mind. He's even studied hypnosis. I certainly hope he practices on me. <laughs> Mina, I do so care for him, more than either of the other men. He found me yesterday alone. It seems a man always finds a girl alone. He attempted to appear cool and collected, but he fell and nearly leapt out of his skin when I touched him. Ooh, mercy. He spoke to me so softly. Miss Lucy? Yes, Dr. Seward? Please, call me John. I'm sorry to have disturbed you, miss. It was impulsive, and I didn't think. Why, of course it wasn't. I was... Indisposed. Yes, your maid told me. Sick, actually. Oh, yes, you are. I mean, how so? I mean, you have a fever? I don't know, doctor. Perhaps you could feel my forehead? Am I burning up, doctor? Well... You are warm. I mean, your beauty is indescribable, Miss Lucy. 
Oh, I'm sorry for being so forward. Uh, perhaps you should leave. Yes, of course. John, not because you offended me. I, I'm just not quite myself today. You know the illness. But I do wish to see you again. Soon? Yes, of course. But before I go, Miss Lucy, please, there is something I must tell you. Accept me, and you'll be above all women. My love truly exceeds me. It is what I know about you that I love, yet what I know not, I love that much more. Oh, I'm such a brute. I apologize, my dear. He was so soft with me, Mina. I will wait, Miss Lucy, until you are ready to receive me. I am willing to keep my heart reserved for you alone. That quite won me over, Mina. For I wanted to kiss him, to hold him close to my heart, to feel my heart next to his. I cannot believe that Lucy Westenra, my Lucy, is ready to give her heart to one man, let alone a gentleman doctor. They are all truly good matches. Why must a girl marry only one man? <sighs> Dr. Seward is as repressed as your Jonathan. Why should I shackle myself to him when I can be with my horse wrangling hero? Oh, Lord, Mina, I could be a lady. Lady Lucille Homewood. I cannot believe you, Lucy. <sighs> you have a love in your grasp, and yet you choose to run away from it. Run away from it, you foolish girl. No, Lucy, you need to decide for these men as well as yourself. I understand that you are scared. I am too. And you laugh, but Jonathan is my adventurer. He is my hero. He is my heart. I simply want that for you. You know your heart, Lucy. You know who you need to choose. Yes, Mina. I do. <laughs> My dearest Mina, now I had this dream, a nightmare perhaps. I was in the coach going to the Count's castle, and I heard the distant sound of wolves howling, and I felt the carriage stop. I looked out to see the hulking figure of my driver climbing down. He had walked out into the mist and disappeared. There was a rustling around us when I then saw, and please believe me, a light blue flame flickering out in the mist. I would have been inquisitive if I hadn't noticed that the foliage had parted all around us and there emerged a pack of wolves, their teeth white and their red tongues lolling. They had surrounded our carriage and the horses began to strain and rear. The moonlight seemed to have a very peculiar effect on this living ring of terror. It was then that the driver, and how he came here I know not, but I heard his voice, raised in a tone of imperious command, and looking towards the sound, I saw him stand there in the roadway. And as he swept his long arms, as though brushing aside some impalpable obstacle, the wolves fell back and back further still. I awoke with a start, and I found myself in my room at Castle Dracula. Mr. Harker, I apologize for my intrusion. Not at all, Count. How may I be of service? There are these few papers that I need you to look over about the property I'm buying in your French Quarter. Of course. I also have some questions about New Orleans for you. Oh, yes, Count. You'll love the magnolia trees and the gardens of beautiful dogwoods. Oh, and the music and the food. You've never had such food. Indeed. What of the people? Why, Count, you'll never find a more passionate or loving community. Yes, but would they be tolerant of a foreigner? I have heard stories of these Americans. Why, New Orleans is truly a melting pot if our country has one. There are no foreigners to us. We have a saying about the way we live our lives. Les a bon temps roule. Let the good times roll. You'll never find a city more alive than New Orleans. It'll take your breath away and make your heart skip a beat. Sounds like paradise. Ah, 
But it looks like we're all in order here. You just need to sign right there. Can it be? Ilona? Mr. Harker! Who is this entrancing woman? Oh, that's Mina. Mina? <laughs> Mina Murray. Yes, she's my fiance. Fiance? Oh, yes, Count. We're to be married upon my return. <laughs> You'll never find a voice so sweet and a heart so open. A soul so pure. Oh, yes, Count. You shall meet her when you come, I'm sure. I await that moment with bated breath. Your New Orleans sounds like a heaven on earth, and this Mina, your fiance. May I extend my most fervent congratulations, Mr. Harker. What's more, I'll extend further my hospitality. You must stay a few more days. Oh, Count, I couldn't possibly impose. Not at all, Mr. Harker. You speak of your country with such warmth. I wish to show you the wonders of mine. It will also give us more time to discuss this Mina of yours. Her beauty is timeless, I must say. Indeed. Well, I suppose a few more days would not hurt. Your castle is beautiful. I must leave you, Mr. Harker. Count, may I have my portrait back? Yes, of course. Ah, the children of night. What music they make. Sleep well, Mr. Harker. I have urgent business that calls me away. Diary entry, 15th of February. The case of R.M. Renfield grows more fascinating the more I learn about the man. Sanguine temperament, great physical strength, morbidly excitable, and periods of lucidity, which I cannot make out. He has certain characteristics very largely developed, selfishness, secrecy, and purpose. But upon inspection of his room, it is clear that he is no longer capable of maintaining his own cleanliness without aid. And on a personal note, I find my sessions with him to be increasingly uncomfortable. It appears as though we have dealt with a fly infestation in this chamber. They have disappeared, Doctor. Excellent news. I shan't have anyone saying our sanitarium is unsanitary. Yes, but Doctor, now there's a problem with the spiders. Yes, it appeared that there are more in here than I had expected. Perhaps they too will disappear. Incidentally, where did the flies go? He fed them to the spiders, sir. Fascinating. I shall ask him why. Renfield, it's me, Dr. Seward. How are we today, Renfield? We? Ah, yes. What a wonderful word. We. Oui. Renfield. Renfield. Renfield, I apologize about the spiders. The spiders? Yes, Renfield. We will get rid of them. No, no, not my spiders. Renfield, it appears as though we're having the same problem with the spiders as we did with the flies. Flies. Yes, I see what I've missed. Yes, Renfield. I've heard you found quite the industrious way to rid yourself of the flies. Perhaps you could help us get rid of the spiders. Spiders? No! No! I need them! We need them! Excuse me? We need them! What do you mean, Renfield? What I said, you silly fool! Wait! Wait, it's all right. He was just protecting me from the fly. Isn't that right, Renfield? It's all right, gentlemen. You may go. Renfield, why did you do that? It is life. Life, Doctor. Do you not understand life? We must care for life, Doctor. We hold it so, so delicately in our hands. You care for life? Oh, I can smell it on you. Perfume. And salt. Fascinating. You've been crying. Why have you been crying? Excuse me? Is it because she doesn't love you, your... Lucy? What did you just say, Renfield? I would be beside myself, beside myself and homicidal. Tell me, Doctor, 
Do you dream of killing people? Renfield, what is it that you're writing? No, no! This is highly regular behavior for a patient to attack one of his doctors. Attack it! Attack it! Attack it! Restrain him! What are you doing with it? It's all right. They're just scribbles. Please! They're my private thoughts. I promise to be good. See, I'll be good. It's all right, Renfield. Stop that now. There is a method to this madman. There has to be. I will discover you, Renfield. We must remove the spiders. No! Please wait. May I have a kitten? Pardon? A cat may be impossible, but no one would deny me a kitten. Yes, yes, a kitten. Do we have an agreement? If you do not mind me, Renfield, we will not come to an agreement. What? I said, if you do not mind, mind you. You will have three days. Mind you! You heard me, Renfield. I will not repeat myself. She will never marry you, you know. <laughs> he won't let her. What? He won't let her? <laughs> Who is he, Renfield? <laughs> My master. <laughs> Dear Journal, I will begin this entry with facts. Bare, meager facts verified by books and figures and of which there can be no doubt. I must not confuse them with my experiences that will have to rely upon my own observations or my memory of them. It has been three days and I now fear that I'm being held as prisoner. I wish not to scare Mina, but I have no one in which to confide that I fear that my life, my soul is in danger. I turn to you for my repose. What manner of man is this Count? Oh, the things that I've seen. In shadows he seems to appear. And I can feel his presence overpowering me at times. Last night. Last night I observed from my window the Count crawled down the side of the castle. He did not return until just before morning. This is the third la, night in a la, row la, that I've observed la, this la, behavior. La, 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 a child. What are you doing here, child? How does one like you find yourself in a place like this? Ladies, who are you? That's mine. Ladies, I cannot. Enough. I said enough. Be gone! I told you! He is mine. When I have gone, you may have what is left of him. Until then, he is mine. <sighs> no man knows till he has suffered from the night just how sweet and dear to his heart and I the morning can be. I heard from my window that there's a boat sailing tomorrow for the States. Now I must escape! Lucy, come away from that window. It is positively abysmal out there. The night, Mina. It's as though the night calls to me. Lucy, don't be so maudlin. Come, let's pick out a dress for carnival. Lucy, come away from that window. I hear them, Mina. Who do you hear? Listen to them, Mina. The children of the night. What music they make. Lucy, you are scaring me. Please come away from that window. Oh. Mina, may I tell you something? Something that isn't to be shared with another soul? Of course, Lucy. You are my heart. Tell me. I've been having these dreams. What dreams? They're so powerful that I can feel them when I'm awake. I'm out at the edge of a cliff, looking over at the sea, and I can stare right out into the waters. The sky is so beautiful, and the water is so black. But I'm not scared, because he is there. Oh, Mina, he has come to me these past three nights. Lucy, your neck! What's on your neck? What? What is it? You have two holes in your neck. Mean I'm afraid. Why? 
in my dreams, he kisses me. He kisses me on my neck. Oh, I can feel him with me. I can feel him in my blood. And when I think of him, I feel myself getting so warm. Who is this man, Lucy? Mina, I do not know. But I know that when I think of him, my blood begins to boil. Oh, Mina, I'm so hot. Oh, Lucy, you're burning up. Just lay here. I'll go get your mother. Why have you asked to see me, Renfield? We had a session yesterday. You must, you must release me. I can no longer be here. I must be gone. What are you saying, Renfield? I entreat you. Send me away from this madhouse. I don't belong here. Release me or I swear I'll do something terrible. What is it you'll do, Renfield? There's no time. You must, you must. Oh, I'm so sorry. You don't understand. I'm not safe here. No one is safe with me. Renfield, you're perfectly safe. Gentlemen, we must sedate you. No! no. Uh, oh, I speak to you from my soul. Uh, I cannot bear what is about to happen. Renfield, calm down! No! Uh. <laughs> Go! I tried to warn you, Doctor. I cannot any longer. He comes! He comes! Now! No. Uh, 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 uh. Lucy, I brought Dr. Seward. Thank you, Mina. He has called upon his mentor, Professor Van Helsing. He is some kind of specialist in your condition who has come here to help you. I shall stay with you as long as you need, Miss Lucy. Until you have recovered, I shall not leave your side. It is a comfort to have you with me, Quincy. I thank you. How long was I asleep? You've been asleep all morning. Oh, Lucy, oh, my darling. Gentlemen and ladies, this is Professor Abraham Van Helsing. It is a pleasure, all. Quincy Morris, sir. We've been with her for days, and it seems the same condition each day. She seems to wake up pale and complaining of the heat. And as the day progresses, she seems to gain her strength back, only to find that the next day she's grown pale and sickly again. She's been quite feverish this whole morning. And there are these strange puncture wounds on her neck, but we know not from where they come. She complains of these nightmares, Professor. It's a man that comes to him. This happens every night. Have the windows been secured and the rooms requested? Yes, sir. May I ask why? The lack of fresh air seems suspect. My boy, it is all for the welfare of this young woman. Now have we secured the doors? Yes, sir. We have some guards posted outside as requested as well. It's quite strange that we are treating her as though she needs protection from the outside world. Is it not some inner sickness that has struck her, Professor? You need to trust me. I've learned not to think little of anyone's beliefs. No matter how strange they may be. If my belief in what ails this child is correct, you will be thankful for the security. We need to create a sanctuary and a place of protection for Miss Lucy if we are to hope for her recovery. The last thing we need to do is scrub brick dust over the entry of this home. It'll ward off evil spirits. Professor, evil spirits? If I wanted voodoo nonsense, I would have brought in Marie Laveau or one of her other foul devil practitioners. Beware, Miss Westenra. Names are powerful. If you go throwing about the most powerful names in here, you better hope you have some kind of protection. What kind of protection do you mean, Professor? The kind your medical studies have not prepared you for. But you have me, and that's a start. I must ask you all to have faith. So. We shall begin. Miss Lucy, can you hear me, Sheriff? Yes. My name is Abraham Van Helsing. Now I know you're in pain. A pain no one else will understand. I'm here to help you. But you must tell me of your dreams. Oh, please, no. Lucy, you must. You can trust Professor Van Helsing. It's just, they do not feel like dreams. Even now, I can hear the sound of wings flapping. The clock strikes two, and I feel as though I'm floating. Is the man there with you? No. No, please don't make me continue. Lucy, you must. I'm just so hot, and I cannot breathe. Just rest then, Cher. 
We're here for you. Miss Westenra, please, fetch us a cold compress for her head. I must ask you all for your minds to remain open as I continue. What is it you believe to be happening, Professor? You say you tested her blood, Dr. Seward. Is there anything that you have found? We found nothing of impurities, Professor. I had assumed yellow fever, but she's clean. Professor, she should not be this sick. She, yet, she still grows pale and is sickly. I was told each of you had given your blood to her. Is this correct? Yes, yes sir. of course. Your love for this girl is truly deep. For to give the life blood that flows through you to her like this is truly a powerful gift. It is that kind of power that we need to combat the dark clouds I see approaching. We would do anything for the safety and well-being of Miss Lucy, Professor. You may well need to, Mr. Morse. There are terrible imaginings in this world. And when we see no foe to vanquish, the fear is still there in our minds. You will need to indulge me, gentlemen. Please, bring them in. These are to be hung around the room, and especially over the windows. We must also entreat Miss Lucy to wear one around her neck. I must protest this odiferous remedy, Professor. This deals more with stuff of witchcraft than practical and reasonable thought. Please, John, she's my daughter. And she's my first concern as well, Mrs. Westenra. Professor, what's going on here? Has your science given you a prognosis, Doctor? Your reason a conclusion that you can quantify? Trust your senses. Have you seen the marks on her neck? We are dealing with something, or perhaps someone, that defies your books and studies of old. Hear this, my friend. Knowledge is greater than memory, and we must not trust the weaker. Do not fear, John, to think the most improbable. We must, the two of us, bear this burden of knowledge just now. There's enough pain for them, and much more to come. Seward, come quickly. A ship from Romania's crashed at port, and they're asking for all doctors to help care for survivors. Jonathan! Mina, I promise that if Jonathan is on that ship, I will bring him home to you. Thank you, Doctor. Come, Professor. We may need your help as well. Quincy, we will need you too. Oh, pardon me, sir. The house is a bit in a tizzy today. May I help you? Hear my voice, child. Pardon, sir? Is this the residence of Miss Lucy Westenra? Why, yes, sir. Hear me in your mind. Say the words, child. Say them. You may enter. Thank you. You are very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Will you remember me? Oh, yes. Good. Please, come in, sir. Oh, my. That smell. Mina. Yes, my sister? Please, take this garlic from around my neck. I cannot breathe. Yes, of course. Oh. <sighs> Lucy. Who are you? Ilona. How did you get up here? We are two stories up. Ilona. Mina. Mina. Hear me, child. After all this time, the waiting, the loneliness, I found you again. My dearest Ilona. And now again, our souls shall be united. <sighs> you will know me again, in time, my love. Mina! Mina! Oh, Doctor, Professor, what is the news about the ship that crashed at port? Mina, I'm sorry to report that there was only one survivor, 
But be truthful, doctor. There were witnesses, there were reports. That is pure silliness, Professor. We must not lie to the child. Professor, what she wants to know. What she should know and what she must know is not dissimilar, doctor. Now tell her the truth. The entire truth. Well, Mina, there were people, perhaps mad or simply touched, that said that from the wreckage emerged two souls a man. And a large gray bat with immense wings. Yes, they did say some kind of bat flew out from below decks. It was hiding in one of the caskets. But Mina, the news is not all bad. The man who survived, it was Jonathan. Your Jonathan. Jonathan? Oh my John, please, where is he? Oh my love, you're home. Mina. <coughs> oh Mina, I feel like I've crossed through hell itself to be here with you. And all I want to do is hold you. What happened to the garlic? Pardon, Professor? The garlic that was around her neck, where is it? She told me to take it off. She felt it was suffocating her. The smell, Professor, it was horrible. It was necessary! Professor! I'm sorry, Miss Mina. You only sought the comfort of your friend. Perhaps nothing bad has transpired. Professor? John, check her circulation. My God, she has no pulse. And inspect her neck. The marks, they're gone. What's going on here, Professor? She has no pulse and she's cold. Why is she so cold? I suggest you back away slowly, John. Professor, what are you saying? Back away slowly, as Miss Lucy has been listening to this whole conversation. Professor, what are you talking about? Professor! What you're about to see may shock you. Miss Lucy is not alive. No, 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 not again! Jonathan! This can't be. That castle, those women, not Lucy too. Professor, what's happening? She has no pulse, no pulse. She cannot be sitting up. She cannot be breathing. No, it's all my fault. I did this. Oh, Jonathan, darling, what are you saying? Oh, darling, darling, John, come to me. Be with me. Doctor, you must Kiss back away. Me. I was so frightened, John. And now I'm so cold. Hold me, John. I'm so sorry that I ever hurt you. I won't hurt you again. You'll be mine, and I'll be yours forever. Kiss me, John. Kiss me. Get back! Uh, uh, John, get behind me. Uh, Professor, what's uh, going on? She's been transformed into a creature of the night. My darling, do not listen. Be mine. Be mine forever. Uh, uh, Lucy! We must go after her. Professor, where will she go? It's him. He's here. It's all my fault. I brought him here. Lucy. John. Miss Mina. Don't. Please. You must promise me you'll keep your fiance here. We will find Miss Lucy. Mina, I promise that we will bring her back to you. Promise Lucy. me that you will stay here and you will keep her here as well. No, I promise, Professor. Come, Dr. Seward. Quincy. Oh, Mina, I cannot begin to tell you of the horrors I've witnessed on my trip. I've learned to not think little of anyone's beliefs, no matter how strange they may be. I've tried to keep an open mind, and I've realized that it's not the ordinary things of life that can close it, but the strange things. The extraordinary things. The things that make you doubt if they be mad or sane. Mina. Mina, can you hear me? Do you hear it, Jonathan? What is it, Mina? It is the night. It calls to me. What did you say, Mina? Listen to them, Jonathan. The children of the night. What beautiful music they make. What did you just say? They say that water is a purifying liquid. 
It is with water that we clean ourselves. Water washes away the dust of the day, and holy men say that we can use it to wash away our sins. Ah, marvel at the mind of man. We can create such things as gods and monsters. We can explain our fears and nightmares through stories and faith. We have such capacity for darkness. Master, you said you'd come for me, Master. And yet we have such hope and such a desire for grace. Clean, clean, must be clean for Master. Truly, there is no such thing as finality. Not a week since I said fini, and yet here I am starting again, or rather, going on with the record. I had no cause to think of what is done. Renfield, for all intents, was the same as he ever was. And as for myself, I was settling down to my work with the enthusiasm which I used to have for it, so that the hole which poor Lucy left on me was becoming cauterized. We'd no idea where she had disappeared to, but the shared pain over the loss of our love had forged a new bond between us. Life had returned to normal. Oh, John, my good fellow, do come sit. My attendants were about to serve us some tea. Oh, and gentlemen, do bring us another chair. My guest shan't stand his entire visit. It's all right. You may go. I swear you simply cannot find any good help these days. But now, John, do tell me to what I owe the pleasure of your company. Well, Renfield, I wanted to have a chat with you. You've shown remarkable progress lately. <laughs> I'm sorry, is there something funny? No, no, John. Continue. Yes, well, I was saying that you've absolutely lowered the amount of spiders in your room. It's positively comfortable in here. Well, Johnny. Dr. Seward, no more familiarities, <laughs> Renfield. <laughs> Why do you laugh? Oh, I was just thinking about something Lucy said to me recently. What did you just say, Renfield? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, Johnny. <laughs> You've seen Lucy. Oh, of course. She comes to me every night, Johnny. Stop it, Renfield! Stop what, Johnny? Stop lying to me and stop <laughs> speaking to me that way. She does not come to you. She told me not to tell you, doctor. She said you'd react this way. <laughs> stop it, Renfield! You're lying! Attendance! You don't look well, doctor. Perhaps you'd like to finish my meal. <laughs> Attendance! Renfield, where did you get that? My master. <laughs> Remove the chair and bury what's left of that poor creature. Farewell, doctor. I'll be sure to give Lucy your regards. <laughs> <laughs> done as the professor wishes, written it down, all of it. And yet as I write, I still cannot make sense of what has happened to us in such a short time. It has been a true comfort to have Quincy with us, as Jonathan recovered from what Dr. Seward called brain fever. We are to be married in a week, Jonathan and I, and then we can put this terrible nightmare behind us. Oh, Jonathan, how good. And thoughtful he is. This world seems full of good men, even if there are monsters in it. I fear the weather has simply destroyed my health. I find sleep eludes me, and I have been quite lethargic these past few days. Indeed, there are even times that I feel like I'm waking as from a fever dream. Mina, my love. Jonathan, what's the matter? Oh, Mina, the news we bring is not cheerful. Please, Jonathan. Quincy, tell me. It is Lucy. At least it may be Miss Lucy. Is she safe? Has she returned? Mina, there have been reports. Reports of a woman in white who stalks the cemetery at night stealing children. They call her the Blue for Lady. But it's all just suspect right now, Miss Mina. You must go. You must find out. If it is a Lucy, then Quincy, she will need our help. We must help her. Promise me. I promise, Miss Mina. <laughs> You're a good friend, Quincy. We shall leave immediately. No, Jonathan, please don't go. She's right, John. Stay with her. We'll bring Lucy home. Thank you, Quincy. How do you feel today, Mina? You look even paler. Oh, Jonathan, it is simply the change of seasons. I'm sure of it. Oh, Mina, you've been through so much since my return. I cannot wait until the day of our wedding. I simply count the seconds until we're bound together forever. 
There is nothing in this world that brings me greater joy than the thought of that day. Mina, when I think of... Mina, why are you wearing that scarf around your neck? Oh, it's Lucy's. I seem to remember putting it on after she left us, and I simply cannot bring myself to remove it. Jonathan, would you be so kind to fetch me some water? I feel so thirsty. <laughs> of course, my dearest. Mina! Master? What you see tonight, gentlemen, will stay with you always. And you speak in such riddles at times, Professor. It is troublesome. We live in troublesome times, Quincy. Not everything can be explained simply. Professor, tell us what we are looking for. Doctor, you do not know what it is to doubt everything. Even yourself. If you did, you'd take better care of those eyebrows. What? <laughs> Professor, Miss Lucy is dead. Is that not so? It appeared so. So if she is somehow not... Professor... I say this as a precaution. She has become undead. Undead? If she has joined the army of the dark, then she must be dispatched. Professor, we can't. She's Lucy. She's my Lucy. And if I could spare you one pang, my poor friend, God knows I would. But tonight, our feet must tread in thorny paths, or later, and forever, the feet of your love must walk in paths of flame. As we shall see for ourselves. Heavens and earth! What sorcery is this? There are mysteries in which men can only guess at, which age by age they may solve only in part. Believe me, we are on the verge of one now. She is as I suspected. What are we to do then, Professor? For now, we observe. And if she is as you suspected, undead? Then we must cut off her head and fill her mouth with garlic. We must also drive a stake through her heart. This oh, is nonsense. This is nonsense. You're a lunatic, Professor. This is the only way to ensure that the devil does not continue to use her soul as a plaything. But, Professor, what you say is just impossible. Have we not seen impossible things, my friend? Oh, my dear John, if there were another way, we would do it. Professor! Come to me, child. That's it, my fine boy. It's only the blue for lady. Come to me. I have such treats for you. <laughs> Get back! <laughs> John! <laughs> Miss Lucy, stand <laughs> down! John! John, please make him stop! Please, John, it hurts! Do not listen to her, Doctor! Lucy! She's no longer your Lucy! Please, John, please! No! Uh. Uh. Oh, thank you, John. You're my hero. You'll be mine, and I'll be yours forever. Ah! Uh. Uh. John! Walk on John, boy. Are you all right? Uh, Professor, please. she attacked me! Please. She is no longer your Lucy. What attacked you was a demon from the pit. Uh, uh, we must now do what we must to see Miss Lucy onto the eternal paradise beyond. I promise you, for I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Oh, Professor, this is grisly business. This is God's work. Now, let us cut off her head. Master, have you come for me, Master? Renfield. Oh, Master, oh, I knew you'd come for me. Say the words. Oh, Master, I've waited so... So patiently. Renfield, say the words. You may 
Enter. <laughs> 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 I fear that I may suffer the same fate as Lucy. Oh, the terrible struggle I've had against sleep so often is late. The pain of sleeplessness or the fear of the pain of sleep with such an unknown horror as it is for me. How blessed are some people whose lives have no fears, no dreads, to whom sleep is a blessing that comes nightly and brings nothing but sweet dreams. <laughs> Jonathan has been such a dear. He has even given me transfusions of his own blood. I am beginning to fear some of the thoughts that are coming into my head though. I want at times, and I am truly embarrassed to say this, to ravage him and, and things I cannot mention. It is though my blood burns for him. I do not know what illness has befallen me, but I crave him and wish to be close to him, to never leave his side. I do not know what is driving this hunger I feel inside. Darling, oh, I did not mean to disturb you. No, Jonathan. It is all right. How do you fare today? I'm feeling warm today. I know that sounds odd, but warm and sad. Sad? Oh, is it Lucy? I'm so sorry that we... Oh, Jonathan, it's just that I do get so lonely. Mina. I wish you could come and sit with me. No, of course, darling. Jonathan... I feel drawn to you. Mina. Hold me. Mina! Jonathan, I want to be with you always. Is that so wrong? Mina, it's just that you're acting so strange lately. Oh, Jonathan. <coughs> Mina! Ah! Mina, you bit me. I do not know why I did that, Jonathan. It's all right, Mina. What is happening to me? Jonathan! You're bleeding. It was Mina. She bit me. I was afraid of this. Jonathan, we must act quickly. And what do we need to do? We need to see how tainted her soul has become. Now, I'm sorry to ask you this, but we must examine her. And I am truly sorry for this, Mina. Jonathan, Professor, what are you going to do to me? Trust, Mina. Do not worry, Miss Mina. We will not hurt you. Dr. Seward, the sedative. Oh, Jonathan, I'm so scared. Please help me. It worked, Professor. What worked, Doctor? I'm so confused. Is Mina becoming one of these creatures? I have my suspicions. She still could be transforming. She will be all right, Professor. You assured me. Miss Mina will be all right. We did not hurt her. She's merely asleep. Now, on to the matter of these journals. Jonathan, I've read yours over, and Dr. Seward, the diary of your madman, Mr... Renfield. Yes, he was a patient. Yes, I'm so sorry to hear about your attendance. Anyhow, while it was nearly impossible to crack this odd code Renfield was writing in, I was able to uncover two specific words. The first was Carfax. That was the estate that I was brokering for the Count. He's the one that's behind all of this. I'm so sorry I brought this upon you all. Jonathan, you are not to blame. Count Dracula must have been planning this for some time. I've only now put the pieces together. Oh, Jonathan, I'm so sorry. Why? And what is it, Professor? The boxes that were on the ship you came over with. They were coffins. Coffins? Professor, why must he need so many coffins? Gentlemen, you see, a vampire, which I am now most assured our Count Dracula is one, is rendered powerless by daylight and must sleep in these coffins to regain his strength. The night is long, and these creatures must feast to live. But why would he bring over so many? There were fifty. Fifty? The dark foreman said that there were only forty-eight. It's as I feared. He must have taken the other two to Carfax Manor. He must intend to take a wife. Gentlemen, we must destroy each of these coffins by consecrating them. 
then he and his kind will have no refuge from the purifying light of the sun. Quickly, we leave at once for Doc Sorge, then on to Carfax to vanquish this evil once and for all. Mr. Harker, I'm ever so sorry to interrupt, but a strange man just delivered this. What is it, Evangeline? I do not know, sir, but I fear the man gave me the fright of my life. How so? What did he look like, girl? Oh, well, that's just it, Professor. He spoke so eloquently, but when he handed me the letter, he began to laugh and said, Tell Johnny I said hello. It was all very strange. Renfield! He's gone! My dear, please, come sit. Are you all right? Oh, it's just that he truly terrified me. When I reached for the letter, he grabbed my arm and started to smell me. He said, he said... It's all right. We're here for you. What did he say? He mumbled about life and how I was filled with such life, and he barely let me close the door. It was as though he was looking at me hungrily. And so now we have two madmen to destroy. Doctor, to my love, in any age I would recognize you as I know my own heart. Come to me. I throw this ball in your honor. Count Dracula. A ball? It is the season. And here are the invitations. In fact, there's one for each of us. Professor, what is he planning? We must not lose our heads. Count Dracula may have a plan, but so do we. We must leave at once for Doc Storage, then on to Carfax, and end this by daylight. In all my life, I've never wanted to dispatch anyone anymore. <gasps> Jonathan, my head. Shh. Mina, rest now. It'll all be over soon. She will not be going to this ball. We will protect Miss Mina, but there is something that you must know. Has Mina ever been to the asylum, Dr. Seward? Never. Why do you ask? Because there were two words in Renfield's diary. The first was Carfax, and the other was Mina.
Professor, what do we do now? These poor fools have no idea with whom they revel. We must find each of these coffins and destroy them. Ah, Quincy, have you finished your task? I found every one of the 48. You won't be able to escape in any one of those boxes. Excellent. Miss Lucy's soul can rest easy. We must end this before someone gets hurt. Well, before anyone else gets hurt. Indeed. I suggest we split up and we search the grounds. We can use this masquerade ball as cover, but still be on your guard, gentlemen. We do not want to catch ourselves unawares. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, fellow wanderers of the night, welcome to my home. Come freely, go safely, and leave something of the happiness you bring. I am a guest in your fair city, your fine and plentiful state, but I feel as though I can make a home for myself here. And my new bride. Bride? She's one of those creatures, a vampire. There is no telling how many of them are among us. You have come here to celebrate this ages old festival. And in the spirit of that celebration, I would like to introduce my beautiful bride. Oh. Mina! So make, eat, drink, and be merry. There's plenty for all. We are honored to have you all here for the joining of our souls eternally. So as you say here, les ai bon temps rolé. <laughs> Professor, tell yourself, Jonathan. There is a reason why all things are as they are. If you are impetuous, you may ruin everything. Mina, he has Mina. My friend, we will get her back. There is no use getting yourself killed here and now. You do not help Mina with your impetuousness. He's right, my boy. Our plan shall have to change. Quincy and Dr. Seward, you must find those other two coffins. Jonathan, you and I shall secure Mina's safety. We shall prevail, gentlemen, for we have faith in the Lord above. With all my heart, I wish to strike the final blow and kill that monster. Focus, man. Keep your wits about you, or the creature will get the drop on all of us. But I do promise you, for Jesus said unto her, Save your prayers, Van Helsing. For I am not nearly as amused by you as I am by my bride's former fiancé, foul beast. <laughs> Boy, you are but a fly to me. I should have Renfield feed you to his spiders. Play your hand, Dracula. Well, you certainly have your share of hubris, Professor. And Jesus said unto her, I, I am, am the, the resurrection, resurrection and, and the life. life. I am the resurrection and the life. For it is he who is dead that I save. Dear God! <laughs> you pray to the wrong man, Doctor. Professor. Kill them all! <laughs> what are we to do now? Well, gentlemen, it looks like death is all we can depend on. Let's hope it isn't our own. What's going on? Stay out of my way, Stuart! What have we just done? We have done the Lord's work. Professor, Dracula has retreated. With Mina. A plan shall have to change. Quincy and Dr. Seward, you must find those coffins. Jonathan, you and I shall find Dracula, and we shall end this tonight. Professor. I will not let you go into the unknown alone. None of you. We are joined now in our holy mission. And for that, we must pray. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And so it begins for us. And it ends for him. Jonathan, we 
will find Mina. She will be safe. You there! Stop! Have I missed something? It cannot be this easy. La 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 no, no. la la Little one, you know not where you stand. La, la, Come here to la, safety. La 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 Ladies, we must get la, you to safety. La, Ladies, I don't have time for this. La, well, la, maybe I have some time. La 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 My dear, this is no game. Dear Lord, who are their vampires? What did you say, my dear? Vampires! Back, demon! Quincy! Quincy, stop! Please! No! Quincy, I love her! Stop! Quincy! Good God, man, pull yourself together! My God, they are powerful. Thank you, sir. I owe you my life. <laughs> Quincy, doctor, we found one of the coffins and we have consecrated it. I see you found the last one. Gentlemen, we shall end this tonight. Wait, what of Renfield? Have we found Renfield? He must have fled off into the night. Then we must end this madness. You are quite right, doctor. We shall end this. For all men, like galaxies, must come to dust. And so will you. Mina! Jonathan? Gaze upon him, my bride, and pity him. Mina! Fool! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Kill them all! I can know you are not of your own mind. And now, a wedding ceremony. <laughs> Professor, do you wish to preside? May you rot in the deepest pit. Well, I thought not. <laughs> My lord, <laughs> it is an honor to serve you. Please join us. <laughs> Dearly departed, we are gathered to bind these two souls eternally. There is only one happiness in this life or this death, love. Have you the ring? <laughs> Stay back! <laughs> <laughs> you are no man of faith, doctor. And you certainly do not have the power to stop me. This new country, there is such life here. <laughs> no. I am more powerful than I have ever been before. <laughs> no, no, please, I do not wish to hurt you. Jonathan. A man of no. faith, eh? Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan. Mina. No, Mina. Mina, we are destined to be together. Come to me. No, Mina. No, Jonathan. No! John, go! Mina! How could you? Mina, hear me speak from my soul. Of the very instant that I saw you, did my heart fly at your service. Come to me. No, Mina, don't listen to him. To me, my love. No, Mina, come to me. In trance, she will die. And in trance, she will become undead. No. No! Ah! You no. shall not have her. Ah! No, beast, you shall not. You take, ah! and you take from others. Ah! You don't know. No man knows till he experiences it. What it is like to feel his own lifeblood drawn away from him and into the woman he loves. I do. I know. Oh, Jonathan. Me. Master. No. I'm sorry, Renfield. No. Renfield. See, my love, there are the monsters. Now, Alona, we will be together forever. Ah! Ilona, 
My love. It is done. Oh, Jonathan. <coughs> Mina. <coughs> oh, Quincy. You brave man, you. Miss Mina, it was a pleasure to have known you. Lucy would speak so kindly of you and your nature. From what I have seen, she has done you no justice. There is darkness in life, and there is light. You're one of those lights, the light of all lights. John. <laughs> You're my brother, Quincy. Blood to blood. Blood to blood. <clears throat> Quincy? Jonathan, I'm so sorry. No, Miss Mina. It is not your fault. Quincy will come to no peace for his virtuous actions on this day. Mina, Mina, the marks, they're gone. I feel stronger than before. Surely I'm no longer under his control. Quickly, we must leave this place and regret not our actions on this day. Wait, Professor. How are, how are we to relay this tale? Surely if I told anyone, I'd be put in a straitjacket. That is the fault of our science, that wishes to explain all. And if they cannot find a way to explain it, well, then they say that there is nothing to be explained at all. We must leave this place and all the nightmares that dwell within. Seven years ago, we all went through the flames. And the happiness for some of us since then is, well, we think, well worth the pain that we endured. It is an added joy to Mina and to me that our son's birthday is on the same day on which Quincy Morris died. His mother holds, I know, the secret belief that some of our brave friend spirit has passed on into him. Miss Mina, it was a pleasure to have known you. Lucy would speak so kindly of you and your nature. From what I have seen, she has done you no justice. There is not a day that we don't miss Lucy's spirit, her sweetness and her strength. She was a true sister of Mina. Oh, do not Lucy me! I have not seen you, my heart, in over a month. And I find myself here with a nun whose fiancé has left her cult. Our son's name is Jonathan Abraham Quincy Harker. His bundle of names links all our band of men together, but we call him Quincy. As expected, Mina's the better parent, and I love her for it, her sweetness and her heart. We love deeper for the danger that we were in. Van Helsen summed it all up as he said with our boy on his knee, we want no proofs and we ask none to believe us. This boy will one day know how brave and gallant a woman his mother is. Already he knows her sweetness and love and care. And one day, he will come to understand how some men so loved her that they did dare much for her sake. Jonathan Harker. We Dracul's have a right to be proud. I am the last of my kind. <laughs>